And tonight we've got the great pleasure of having Dean Jenkins uh, uh, with us. Dean is the founder of Trades. He's been trading for well over 20 years. And he makes his living trading uh, equities and options, but he's also coached many, many people on how to uh, uh, reach their financial goals. So he's got some very good technical analysis background. And so with that, Dean, welcome to the Candlestick Forum. We're anxious to see your information tonight. Okay. Uh, you were breaking up just a little bit for me. Looking forward to talking to you about uh, how I use Ichimoku Cloud and Elliott Wave, and I call it East Meets West. And we get two completely different and really good trading systems. When they agree on something, it can be really, really good. I mean, we can get some great trades out of that. Okay, so as, uh, as Steve said, I'm Dean Jenkins. I'm the founder of FollowMeTrades.com. And I just, I really enjoy trading, and I, and I love talking to traders, talking about trading, and, and sharing information and ideas. So I've been trading over 25 years. Uh, I founded Follow Me Trades uh, just over three years ago. And uh, really having a good time. And please, as we go along here, jump in with any questions you have. Love to take any questions you have. Once I walk through um, some of the information about how I use Ichimoku Cloud, Elliott Wave, then I'd be happy to take a look at any charts. I'll, I'll, uh, I use TradeStation as my main charting platform, and I'll be happy to take a look at any trades or stocks or symbols that you are interested in and kind of run them through my filters and see how they look. Okay. I'm going to show a couple of trades that I really like and you know just hey I'm a trader I'm not a financial advisor I'm not giving financial advice so just want to make that clear you know, each person needs to make their own decisions about um, what they're going to do in the markets but I'll share what I like and you know maybe just to give a, a quick sample of it let me show a trade uh, that we're in right now uh, that I like a lot that is Charles Schwab uh, symbol uh, SCHW went short on the uh, Charles Schwab on the 15th of October. So here we are about, uh, what are we, 10 days, 10 calendar days into the trade. And the stock has gone down 9.95%. I'm trading it with a put option contract. You can see here, three contracts got about a uh, $2,100 investment. We're up 1000 bucks, uh, 46% in uh, 10 calendar days. And here's what the chart looks like. So we went short on this at 48.24. Sitting here at 43.18, I have a target of 41.37, and it looks for the world like we're going to hit that target, doesn't it? And so I'm going to walk through how it is I found this trade, you know, the setup I was looking for, how we're managing it, and all that kind of stuff. And um, you can see I've got Ichimoku Cloud on here. I've got some Fibonacci lines on here, and that's a clue. I'm using Ichimoku Cloud, and I'm, uh, I'm using uh, a very simple form of Elliott Wave. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk, I'm going to explain the tools that I use. I use Dow Theory also, just in, in analyzing price action. It's an important uh, tool. It's an important analysis technique. I'm going to give just a little bit of information on each Ichimoku Cloud, how it works, if you haven't heard of that before. A very brief review of uh, a very simple form of Elliott Wave Theory, and then how I use them together. And I'll share a couple of my favorite trades that still have room to get in, and I'd be happy to... Um, analyzing charts that you're looking at. And uh, Vicky, you say, hey, why are you using Ichimoku Cloud with a moving average? You know, I got the, uh, it's a sharp eye there, Vicky. So the Ichimoku Cloud is this shaded area in this white line is a 200-day simple moving average. I, I really like it. And I'm going to, when I get into the uh, Ichimoku Cloud a little bit, um, I'll, I'll explain that. But let me, uh, let me roll just a little bit here. So again, I use Dow Theory, Ichimoku Cloud, Elliott Wave as the primary tools in my trading. So here's uh, Dow Theory. So Charles Dow, who uh, founded the Wall Street Journal way back at the, um, in the late 1800s, and he wrote a series of articles in the Wall Street Journal that are now collected and called Dow Theory. One portion of that, one of the things he wrote about was trend analysis. And what he simply said was, um, you know, an uptrend is defined, a bullish trend is defined by a series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, so on and so on. Well, that's important because price doesn't move in a straight line. And as traders, we kind of want to know 
is the trend still going on? Should I get out? Um, because, you know, if you're in profit, the thing headed up and it starts pulling back, you know, there can be a little bit of fear about, you know, hey, am I going to give all my profit away? But if you understand how trends move, what a trend is, and you understand that you're going to have pullbacks even in an ongoing uptrend, it can give you confidence. And you can also use this to help manage um, stock placement, which is what I do. So bull trend, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Uh, bearish trend, just the opposite, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. As long as that pattern continues, trend is intact. We can use the same information to confirm when a trend has begun. When we get a high and a higher low where price does not go below the previous low and then it puts in a new high, that's a pretty good indication that a trend is beginning. And we quite often see that coming out uh, uh, out of a channel or maybe at the end of a previous trend and then it maybe would go sideways or have a complex correction or something and then uh, uh, a new trend would emerge. And Zuza says, can't see the whole chart. Can I adjust it? Um, I, I think I'm full screen and uh, everybody else said it looked good. And uh, there, uh, Jim's giving you some 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 tips there, uh, Zuza. So I'm going to keep going. So trend begins with these three data points, right? High, higher, low, new high. Trend has ended when we don't put in any more highs, right? You got to, you know, higher highs, higher lows. Uh-oh, lower high, didn't put in a new high. And then price comes down below that previous low. That's a pretty good sign that that bullish trend has ended. Same thing for a downtrend. It begins with a low, lower high, new low. And then when new lows are no longer put in and um, it's a higher low, and then we take out the previous lower highs, right, the uh, downtrend is probably over. Price is probably going to start heading up, at least into a new series of, you know, a new leg of the overall big picture trend, whether it's, you know, a, a big major trend or a correction to the trend or a continuation of the original trend. Um, but this is really helpful, and uh, I'll show you on some live charts. But let's talk about Ichimoku Cloud. A lot of people have trouble with that pronunciation. So uh, Ichimoku Cloud, Ichi is a Japanese word. It means one. Um, if you've ever heard, you know, the Japanese number system, Ichi, Ni, San, Chi, Go, Roku, um, it's, it's number one, Ichi. <laughs> um, and uh, Ichiban means number one. Um, and there's an Ichiban beer. It's probably what the Goichi Hasada's got sitting in front of him here is an Ichiban beer, number one beer um, in Japan. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Ich Ichimoku Cloud was created by this handsome gentleman, uh, Goichi Hasada, in the 1930s in Japan. Interesting that um, he wasn't a, a trader or working in the, um, you know, as a, a market analyst or anything. He was a journalist in Japan. Uh, but he started working on this in the 30s and ended up spending some time putting it all together. And he published it in 1969 in a book. And what that Ichimoku means is one look. A one look equilibrium chart. And I found it to be really, really helpful. And we'll show you some examples on charts here in a bit. So here, let me ask a question. How many of you believe that uh, moving averages matter? You know, a lot of people use, I showed you the 200 is on my chart. People use the 50, the 100, the 3, the 10, whatever period. Um, and crossovers, people use 2 and exponential and simple and, you know, whatever. So yes, we're getting a bunch of yeses. People believe they matter. Absolutely. Well, I believe they do too. Okay. Um, Ichimoku Cloud, at it, really at its core, is really just a different look at moving averages. That might surprise people, but it, it really is. Um, simple moving average, SMA, is simply the average closing price over some number of previous bars. So you, you look back 100 bars, and you would take the average of the closing price of those 100 bars, and you make a dot. And then the next day, you make another dot, and another dot, and that those dots form a moving average line. So it's the average closing price over some number of previous bars. Most people use two or three simple moving averages or exponential, and they look for crossovers, and they look for direction, and uh, support and resistance areas with those. Each local cloud, it's... It's taking an average of some number of bars back as well, but it's taking the highest high and the lowest low over some number of previous bars back 
And then there's two look back periods and some derivatives from that. We'll dig into the math here just a little bit on it. So the first element, and you'll see here, I've, I've got the elements displayed, and I've already got um, five components of each local cloud displayed on this chart. The first one is this, this bolded yellow line here. It's called the 10 con line or the conversion line. And the, and the formula for that is simply the highest high and the highest low divided by two, the average, for the last X period. And that's a variable that you can set in the indicator settings. The default setting is nine. Nine bars back, the average of the highest high, highest low. It's very similar to a fast moving average line. We're just looking at the average of the highest high, highest low, highest high, lowest low versus the average closing price. I think it's important to account for those extremes in price. Um, price actually went to the highs and the lows, right? regardless of what the closing price was. Shows a short-term trend. When it crosses over the slower line, it can indicate a trend change, but it can also have some, some uh, false calls. Okay, but that's the 10 con line, this yellow one that you see here. The Kaijun is called the baseline, and it's the highest high, highest low average for a longer number of periods back. And I believe the factory default setting for that is 22 periods. Um, I've changed the default settings. I'm using a little bit different settings. Um, and I'll talk to you about how you can get those as well. But it's similar to a slow moving average. So the other one was, you know, default was 9. I think this default here is 22, so more than double. Right? It shows a little bit longer trend. And again, when, when the fast and slow crossover, it can indicate trend changes. But you can have some false calls on that as well. Okay. This green line, this is where it gets a little interesting, right? It's called the Senku Span A. Senku means going first or proceeding. And it forms the faster part of this cloud boundary, the shaded area. And it predicts future support areas or resistance area. And uh, its formula is the fast line plus the slow line or the baseline divided by two. So it's the average of this yellow and purple line. And then it's plotted some number of periods ahead. It's projecting out into the future what the support area is going to be. Pretty cool. Not very many indicators project into the uh, future. No moving averages do. Uh, span B, it's the slower portion. And it is the average of the highest high and lowest low over some longer period, typically in the 50s. Okay. So you could view the leading edge of this as kind of an average of these two. So if it's, you know, factor default 9 and 22, right, somewhere between there, and then this one, the red line is going to be in the 50s, right? So it's the average of the highest high, highest low over about 50 bars back, and then it's also plotted um, some number of period, which is a variable number, into the future. And these two lines give you the cloud. Kumo in Japanese, right? It's the space between span A and span B, and it's shaded. And when it's going up, it's green, and when it's going down, it's red. The default colors are different, but I thought green and red made sense to me. Up is green, down is red. Okay, uh, and this is projecting um, support and resistance area, and the thicker the cloud is, the stronger the support. It's that easy. Uh, as it gets thin, you'll see when price breaks through it, Typically, it's when the cloud is the thinnest. And so the, the cloud does a really good job. And you can see on this chart I'm showing you here, AEM, Agnico Eagle Mines. Um, that was a real trade we took. Um, price goes up and pulls down to the cloud during the trend, during the higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. But it's doing a pretty good job. And it's predicting several bars in advance where the support's going to be. And it's doing a really good job of predicting what the support levels are. And so it has, gives you confidence in the trend continuing. And then as that cloud thins out a little bit, um, it's weaker. Might be looking at a break and a train change in trend. So here's how my charts look. I, I went ahead and after I started using it for a year or two, I realized that, um, you know, in order for a, a trend to be up, you want the fast line to cross over the uh, slower line and you want price to move above the cloud in an uptrend. Well, if price is above the cloud, it is axiomatic that those lines crossed. So I went ahead and took them off. Just to clean the chart up, I like to keep my, my uh, 
in my charts and my display as absolutely clean as possible. So all I really display anymore uh, relative to each local cloud is just the cloud. All I really care about is, is you know, its projection of, of support and resistance. I want to know whether price action is above the cloud, whether it's breaking through the cloud, whether it's below it. I'm really using it as a trend confirmation tool and a support and resistance um, projection tool. And it's not the, uh, not the only uh, tool I use. I, mean, I, told, I told you I use uh, Dow Theory, and now we're going to talk in a minute about Elliott Wave, and I bring all those together. Okay. What's the last date on the AEM chart? I think this is last year, October of last year, perhaps. Um, oh, you were looking at the AEM. And this one is, this is a very current chart, actually. This is Kronos. And we traded Kronos. We caught this move. It was awesome. And I wanted to point that out because, you see, we took this trade on Kronos um, right as it broke, about $7, right as it broke through the cloud. You can see the cloud was very thin there. And this is actually a, a model Elliott Wave chart. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But it had a huge move up. It had a perfect correction. And then a continuation of that original trend, big run. We caught that at 7 took it up over 12 it was a really good trade. You can see we caught it where? Right as it was breaking the uh, Ichimoku cloud, indicating a change in trend. And it was big time. All right. Oh, yeah, wave. So before I start, anybody rolling their eyes? Anybody looked at Elliott Wave and, ah, oh, that's so complicated and the practitioners can't agree on wave counts and anybody having that reaction? Yeah, raise your hand. Uh, Vicky's honest. Yes. Okay. Steve says yes. Okay. You know, I, I would be too. Um, some of the, some of the ways I've seen people practice Elliott Wave and some of the material I've looked at, um, I use a really simple, version of Elliott Wave. It was developed by Ralph Nelson Elliott um, back in the 1930s, interestingly, about the same time that uh, Goichi Hasada was working on Ichimoku Cloud in Japan. Um, and all he said was, hey, um, I, I believe that there's this thing such as collect there's a collective investor psychology, crowd psychology that moves between optimism and pessimism, natural sequences, and that um, Price action quite often follows a series of impulsive and corrective waves as as the crowd psychology changes. Now, you know, you can see there's a wave one, two, three, four, five, and then A, B, C. All I really care about, I want to trade wave three. It's the it's a big impulsive move. After there's a big impulsive move, I'm looking for a correction because every massive trend eventually corrects someday. Trees don't grow to the sky, and charts just don't go up forever. Right? Someday they correct. So I look for signs of the correction beginning. I'll trade a correction if it's been up for a long time. After a correction, there is quite often a continuation of that original trend. You know, the crowd psychology shifts once again. Um, And it is. Uh, Don's saying it's all subjective. I think matters is price action. I think it's just a way to analyze price action. Um, I, I absolutely believe um, in price action. I believe in the reality of price. The only reality is in the market of price and volume. But they do form patterns. And in those patterns come our edge as traders. There's a lot of different things people use. Um, but I, I found this to be very helpful and valuable. One of the things that frustrates people uh, when they look at a chart and try to use Elliott Wave as they say, I can't find a wave pattern. And the reason for that is it may not exist. Here's Tesla right now. Um, look, at, look at Tesla price action on a daily chart. There's no structure or pattern here. There's no impulsive corrective move, right? The, the corrections are 100% of, uh, of the moves. So Tesla, is, you know, talk about... Uh, Crowd psychology, it's a stock driven by a tremendous amount of emotion, more so than most. And it's chaotic, and it's all over the place. There may be a strategy to day trade it or short term, but, you know, my trading rules, if I look at a chart like Tesla right now, I ain't touching it. Uh, I, I, I don't have an edge on a chart like that. And as a trader, I want an absolute um, probability of being right, 
no guarantees, but I want a high probability that I'm going to be right. All right. Uh, so LA Way is easy. All you got to do is memorize these these grand super cycles and cycles and primaries, and uh, I think there's 144 permutations of all these. This is the thing that turned everybody off, right? This is ridiculous. Who can memorize all this noise? And I don't even know what all this means. I don't care. Um, LA Wave really is easy, and uh, when we're only looking for three trade setups, and there's this is a, a book that belongs on every trader's uh, bookshelf written by Bennett McDowell. It's called Elliott Wave Techniques Simplified. And that's what we want to do is simplify it, make it something um, uh, that we can apply, that we can look at in a few seconds and see if there's a recognizable pattern on a chart and that it would be repeatable. And then if I look at one chart and see a pattern and I come back to it, I would see that same pattern and the same you know, trade setup and that others could do the exact same thing. And that's what we've got. So Bennett wrote this book, and I like to say tongue-in-cheek, hey, I didn't write the book on Elliott Wave Techniques, but I helped, um, because I did write a chapter in this book. Uh, Bennett and I have worked together for years, and he invited me to write a chapter, so I did contribute to the book. All right, let's take a look at uh, how we apply Elliott Wave. And I, put, I saw a question, hey, how do you take a Wave 3 entry? I'm going to show you right now. This is a real trade we took a while back. I've got the waves labeled here. So wave one and two can be very small. And just when I look at a chart, all I want to know is, is there a big impulsive move or is there a potential for one? Is there a channel and the potential to break out into a big move? Okay, so i got the wave label here. Wave one is the first move up, off the bottom. Wave two is the full, first pullback. Wave three is the big move. Wave four is the correction. And then wave five is the continuation of the original trend. And let's look at how we saw the setup here. Okay. First thing is here's, here's wave one, right? First move up out of this channel. Nice breakout. Interesting. Boom. First pullback after that. And look at how it's, it's in the Ichimoku cloud, right? It's right into the cloud. It hasn't broken yet. We've got to pull back. And then, bam, there it is. We've got, remember Dow Theory, we've got a high. We've got a higher low. We've got a new high. And we're actually putting a new high. What's going on? It just broke above the Ichimoku cloud. Gets my attention. That's where the long entry is, right there, at about uh, uh, just over three bucks, three and a quarter, it looks like. Okay, and then carries on up here over six bucks. That's awesome. And then we get this correction, and we get this correction. This is wave four, and you can see these blue lines. It corrected down to a Fibonacci retracement zone. Pretty cool. We can project with high confidence after a big impulsive move how deep it's going to correct once it starts. We look for proof of it starting low, lower high, new low. That's about there. Low, lower high, new low. Now, by the time it broke the Ichimoku cloud and really proved the downturn was going on, there wasn't enough profit there. So I didn't take the law uh, short. But we do, we can wait for the next move. Here it comes. After the correction, right, here comes a high, higher low, new high. Breaking the Ichimoku cloud. Here's your new entry. Target zone is uses Fibonacci um, extensions. So the retracement is the Fibonacci retracement tool. The target zone for a wave five is a Fibonacci extension between 61.8 and 100%. So somewhere in here is where it's it, um, projected to go. So you can see when I took a snapshot of this chart, we're just about there. Okay, and during this trade, um, I can manage the stops using Dow theory, right? As price puts in higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, I simply trail my stop up to those higher lows, and then as new ones are established, um, I keep trailing my stop up. And that's how I do it. Boom, 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 boom. And then eventually, I'm going to get stopped out. Now I take profit along the way. I typically take it in thirds. At key levels, key Fibonacci lines, uh, key reversals, or once we hit the target zone. I don't exit just because we're in the target, by the way. Um, target is really used to predict whether there's adequate profit potential in a trade. I don't exit just because it hit the target, because it may continue to run. And I'll just keep trailing my stop up to those natural support levels, taking profit along the way, and eventually get stopped out. Um, and, you know, some people, when they hear that, 
their antennas go up and some people really have an aversion to using stop orders, that's fine. Everybody's got their own you know, belief system about that. When I say stop, it's a predefined exit point. Right? I, said, I said an alert on the chart and the price goes down to that price, I'm going to exit the trade in some manner. Maybe go to place an order, close an option position or something. So you know, it doesn't necessarily imply absolute need to have a stop market order uh, you know, in play. Some people really get confused by that and get, you know, get tense about that. They have strong feelings about stop orders um, or having orders on it all and the, and the market makers or gremlins who are going to come and take your stop out. So um, I, I simply have a predefined exit point that moves as price action plays out. And if it hits that exit point, I will close the trade. And I do. Okay. Everybody good? Hey, what's those triangles? It, it's called the Pyramid Trading Points. It's part of the ART software suite uh, created by Ben McDowell, the same guy that wrote the book on uh, Elliott Wave. Pretty cool software. And uh, I'm, I'm sure Bennett has presented here before as well many times. Great guy. Okay. And I believe there is a recording of this. And Jim, the recording guy, is here doing his thing. Okay. Yeah. So, what symbols would you like me to look at? I showed you this tray on uh, Charles Schwab. Um, too late. Sorry about that. It is too late to get into uh, Schwab right now. It is. I had a target zone of 41.37. Here's the here's the Fibonacci retracement zone. It's between these two blue lines, which is 38.2 to 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. My target's in the middle. We're about to hit the target, so uh, I think it's a little late to get into this trade. But let me show you. Um, and, and here's the entry I took on this one, by the way. Right? Had a, had a marvelous uptrend. Schwab had a great run. You know, it went from what? Low of 22, 23 bucks up to 60. That's a pretty good trend. Well, what did I see? Hmm, low or high? Low. There was a good entry right here as it broke the cloud. Lower high, right? And then it went channeling for a long time. I was watching, and then there was a low, lower high, and a low. And we had to wait for earnings. It announced earnings right before our entry. Looked good still after earnings. I don't want to take a trade right into a potentially disruptive event. So we took our short at 48.24. Again, low, lower high, right from the cloud. And I had a great wave count with a, you know, a, Wave three, clear evidence of wave four beginning, a corrective move beginning with low highs, low high, negative momentum. And I had a great price target here in the Fibonacci retracement zone, which is where we expect wave four to go. There we go. So that was a uh, great trade. But let me give you one that uh, still has some room, uh, room to get in. Uh, really like both of these, CSX. The CSX. Same, same trades, wave four, bearish trade. Big surprise, right? Uh, most of the trades are going to be to the downside right now. Uh, so look here, uh, nice, low, lower high, low, broke the cloud, lower high, came down under the cloud. We took our entry right here at 69.13. Initially I had my stop up here at this high. Now we've put in some new lows. That trailed my stop. So um, if you look at my charts, I like, I like keeping things simple. So on my chart, you'll see I got three colored lines. These over here are the Fibonacci uh, retracement lines. Light blue line, that's the entry price I got in. Red line is my current stop where I will exit the trade if it goes up to it. And the green line is my target. That's what those are. It's real simple. Um, so you can see on CSX, my, uh, my entry and stop are overlapped. So they're... I moved my stop down to the same point where I got in, and I've taken one third profit. So even if this goes up and hits the stop, I got a small win. It's what I call being in the catbird seat, right? The worst thing that will happen on this trade at this point in time is that it's a small winner, and it has the potential to be a bigger winner. Pretty cool. Uh, there is still room if you look at where the stop is at 69.13, and the target is right inside the Fibonacci retracement zone. So the target here on this one is 56.96, and Another thing that's important, um, math is important to me in trading, and I hope it is for you too. I look here, if I were to enter this, this trade at current price, 66.39, I 
it has a good reward to risk ratio. And that means that um, the amount that I would lose if it goes up, you know, trade fails and hits the stop, the amount I lose is going to be very small relative to the amount I will make. This is my reward. If it goes down to the target from here, from this entry point, that's how much I will make per share. It's got, you know, that's a three or four to one reward to risk ratio. That's outstanding. So that still looks like a great trade to me to enter. And I'm in that short with, um, I got the January $75 put on that one. I'm 20% profit after, what, seven days or something? Not too bad. And the next one here is CTAS. This one still has some room to get in. Not quite as much. Quite as much. So the CFX, a better one, CTAS, the reward the risk, you know, not quite as dramatic, still looks good. Um, and we're in some profit on that trade as well. Got in on the 18th on that one, and we are at 53% uh, profit on the put. So the 180, January 180 put is what I'm trading that way. Oops. It's hard to chart a uh, uh, option contract. Uh, long, uh, I'm long silver. A couple ticks under my entry, but I think it's still got some um, potential. And uh, we took this one, you can see the cloud's narrowing, so it actually didn't break the cloud. We had a really clear sign with a high, higher low, high positive momentum. So we went ahead and took that one, knowing it's a little aggressive, but uh, I think it's got a good chance of, uh, of making it. Okay. So we've got a couple symbols. Here, uh, CDNA for Jim. Let me go ahead and take a look at this, Jim. And just uh, uh, up front, I want to say it's hard to find a good trade. It's hard to find a good symbol. So and I reject many more than I accept. So don't be offended. But who knows? I might find a good one. Yeah, so ISG looks kind of like Tesla to me. This looks like static. And so... I, I choose not to trade um, charts like this, and it's also the volume today was 34,000. That's too thin for me also. I like to trade with uh, um, uh, some good liquidity, you know, at least a couple hundred thousand shares a day, preferably more, preferably, you know, a million or more. Um, but, yeah, 34,000 in a day, a little thin for me, and the, and the, uh, the, the pattern here is just a little bit chaotic for, for my life. So, oh, and he says it was the wrong symbol anyway. Okay. Uh, go. Well, at least we got it analyzed, right? Uh, CDNA. So this is interesting. This is a nice chart, and it's relatively orderly compared to that last one we looked at. Um, relatively orderly. And the question here that I would ask myself, myself, this correction is just deep enough to be a wave four. And we don't have to guess. We can just measure it. We just go look. And we don't have to obsess over this, right? It's just like the first move up, first move down. That's one, two. We measure from two to three. There's lots of retracement. Not a little short. And that can still be um, wave four. It's got negative momentum. But wave four typically has an A and a B and a C. And C is typically equal to or a little bit longer than A. So it looks like it may have some room to go down here, finish this correction, and there's, I don't know if there's enough you know, profit to trade that. And it's got some positive momentum, so I don't know if I'd really be comfortable short with just yet. You know, if it took out this low here, and then, you know, best case, you know, if, I, if I put my target in the middle of the retracement zone, and currently I'd have to have my stop up here at this high, and that's about a 1.5. So if it took out this low, there might be a case there for a short. Um, it's not, not my favorite, but that's that's what I would be looking at there on CDA. And then uh, ER says it wasn't ISG, he had a typo, it's INSG. Let's look at that. Uh, well, obviously, some new information came into the market. It had a gradual trend, and then it exploded. So this would be wave three. And same analysis here. You know, really it's one, two, three. Right into the retracement zone. Pretty nice. 
uh, A, B, C. This could be the beginning of the next uptrend. This could be it. And what you want is to see a high, high or low, new high. And about the time that happens, it's probably going to be breaking out of the cloud. And if it does, where is it going? Well, we've got tools. We don't have to guess. There's something like this, Fibonacci extension. So if this gets proven that it's heading up, and I'd also like to see this is a momentum oscillator down here, just price oscillator. It's a, it's a special one. It's called the Owl, again from uh, Bennett McDowell. Right? I want to see that turn green. And by the time we get this high, high, low, new, new high, this will be green. And so looking for an entry breaking right into here somewhere, 382, got a price target, uh, low end of it, 499 up to 607. You can afford to wait. Um, because a three dollars and eighty-two going to five bucks is a uh, fifty percent profit or more. You can wait for that. That will increase the probability of the trade, in my opinion, by waiting for that new high to come in. Uh oh, now they're uh, yeah. That that's not MACD. It's called the Owl, the Optimum Wave Locator. All right, a couple more symbols. I'm trying to catch up here. Uh, will this work on a volatility like VXX? Yeah, anything that's plotted with price bars, you know, with an open high, low close, it will work on. Either price bars or, or candles, either one. Um, let's see if I have data on the actual VXX. Yeah, so here, um, nice little breakout on the VIX. No surprise, right? Um, actually broke above the 200. But yeah, as long as you can plot it, you can do Forex, you can do ETFs, you can do stocks, anything that will chart, you can apply this method to. Uh, Arun is asking about Visa. V. Hope I got your name right. Apologize if I slaughtered that. The Visa looks almost like the S&P 500, doesn't it? Looks very similar. Been running up for years. Big pullback. Now, what's interesting about Visa? I said I someone asked earlier. Hey, you got the moving average on there. I do. I like the 200 days. Probably the most popular indicator for daily stock charts. And so, you know, people are watching it. People are responding to it. So I want to know where where it's at. Price came right down to the 200 day moving average and sat there. It broke the cloud, but it sat there on the 200. And uh, it looks like it might be trying to head up. It had a pretty good day. 2.41%. Um, I would be looking, if I, was, I wouldn't try to trade it unless it broke out of here, and if it did, if it goes sideways, it might be breaking through the cloud there. So there might be a long coming here. Um, it's an awfully long trend, and at the end of a trend like this, it's really hard to project a target. I don't really like those. So I'd wait for a full-on correction before I tried to trade this and chase the last few blocks out of that trend. Um, and while we're talking about it, let's go look at the uh, S&P 500. Something really interesting is happening here. Um, speaking about the 200-day moving average, uh, so for years, um, if you, you might have noticed that the market's been uh, going up for eight or nine years now. Uh, earlier this year, when we had a little pullback, a little hiccup. It pulled back and found support at the 200-day moving average. Yeah, it wicked under it a little bit. It, it closed a little under it, but it ultimately found support and carried on up to new highs. This is different. This smashed through the 200-day moving average like a baseball through a plate glass window. It broke down through it, went up to the bottom of the cloud. Remember, we talked about it projecting support and resistance. Right? Support just can't, became resistance, it looks like. Now it's under the 200-day. This is a really nice low, low, high, new low. And it um, looks for the world like a bigger correction could be happening. But this is the big one. The on a weekly chart, the midpoint of the correction would be 1897 on the S&P 500 cash. It's a big move. Okay, let me catch up here. K. James would like to look at K. Come on. Uh, not the 
cleanest chart on the planet, but there is a wave count here, and it is uh, even drawn. So it, here's wave one, here's two, here's three, here's four, and now it's trying to start five. High, high or low, above the cloud, hovering around the uh, uh, 200 day. You know, was that pullback good enough? There was. It's pretty deep, in fact. It went, it, as long as it stays above the 76.4 line, it's still a valid wave four. Looks like wave five is trying to start. Uh, just like before, I like. I'll take. I'll. I'll give up a few points of profit in order to gain probability on a trade. Um, so I would like. We got one big move up. We got one pullback. I would sure like to see a new high, but taking this one out, that would increase the probability of the trade. And we got a target zone then of 83 to $96 up in this region here on Kellogg. Um, Steve's asking, hey, does that work on the intraday futures like the uh, NQ? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's my intraday panel. I track the S&P 500, the gold and oil on 10-minute on charts. And uh, let's look at oil here. So you, can, you know, you put the NQ in as well. Um, so here's oil. You know, it's kind of swinging, right? There's no Elliott wave count here. And that's what you kind of need to train your eye. If there's 100% retracement, it's not Elliott wave, right? Big, huge move up, 100% retracement, it's not Elliott wave. Big impulsive move. Um, this retracement actually is at a Fibonacci retracement level. And so this could be. If we see evidence of this turning of this particular move, impulsive, corrective, we get a high, high, low, new high, then we could project where it would go next. And it's on a 10 minute uh, crude oil, light sweet crude futures chart. All right. Started a short position on K today. Well, I hope it works. It works out for you. Prove me wrong. And depending on the interval you're trading and you know how long you're going to be in the trade, you could get a win on a short. I'm looking at a daily chart and I'm thinking, you know, I wouldn't take the long unless it got up here anyway. And if it did, that would probably be in that trade three or four weeks. And you could take a little intraday or smaller time frame shorts, even in that up move, and still win. So it all depends on, you know, your trading approach, if you're doing short-term swinging or longer-term trend trading, right? So we could both be right. That's the good news. I am scanning here. Uh, someone's asking, I'm to use the 50-day moving average. I do not. What you see is what I got. Um, Ichimoku Cloud, uh, the OWL, the price oscillator, uh, 100-day moving average. And you saw on, on some screenshots uh, the pyramids. Right? This can be helpful as well. That's it. Okay, a couple of folks were asking about, uh, hey, how can you get my cloud settings? Well, have I got a deal for you? Um, so I run a, a stock advisory service, right? The, all these trades that I'm showing you that I'm in right now were short CSX, CTAS, Schwab, or Long Silver. You know, my net profit on these trades, snapshot in time here is what, 1,919, 1330 minus 140. So we're about, um, 1923, you know, call it $2,200 profit. This is all based on these positions are based on a $50,000 account. And we've been in these about, you know, eight to 10 days. Pretty typical. Typically, we have more positions on. We just close some. Typically, got, you know, between six and 10 uh, open trades in any given time. And this is a typical performance. Um, you don't see any pictures of uh, private jets and yachts and stuff. But we do make a uh, Pretty solid profit. Here's my track record. 
year after year after year. We're averaging lately, you know, 25 to 30% per year. And uh, this year was a little slow to start with, but now we're getting some real momentum. I believe in uh, complete transparency. So if you click these green buttons, you can see every trade I took. And, you know, good, bad, and the ugly. Um, every single trade is listed here that's in those uh, results for every year listed. And um, my results are all verified. They're audited by a third-party CPA firm. So I started about a year and a half ago. Um, when I post the numbers on my, on my website, I send my brokerage statements to a CPA firm. They produce an audit report, and they post it right there. So what I do with these trades, I send out alerts for my subscribers and say, hey, I'm going short on CSX. Here's the trade parameters. And then through the life of the trade, hey, we're taking profit and moving the stop. I give complete updates step by step by step. And if you are interested in that, um, special offer for you, you can check that out. Uh, check it out for 30 days for $37. And then after that, it's 97 a month, which is a 25% discount off of this price. 100% money back guarantee. You know, I don't, I just I believe you know I'm giving a trial so you can come see if it's a good fit for you. More people stay, more people like it. But if it's not, um, you know, no questions asked, no hard feelings. Just you just send us a note and you get a hundred percent refund. Um, only want people that are completely happy with the service. Okay, so thirty-seven dollars for a thirty-day trial, and what's included? You get a watch list of potential trades that I'm watching, waiting for some final criteria. You know, I pointed a couple out today. I said, well. I would take that trade if this happens. I've got quite a list of those. Um, you get alerts, email, text message when I'm getting into a new trade. Um, uh, you get the exact details of the trade. Enter the stop, the target. Um, mo most trades can be traded either by you know, buying, going long the shares or going short the shares or with option contracts. I provide information to do it both ways. I like options. Some people like trading with shares. I provide the information. Everything's based on the underlying shares, underlying chart. And so it's easy to trade that way or, you know, to use the contracts I'm using. You get alerts, email or text message when I make a change, move a stop, take profit, close the trade. You get access to a live trading room Monday through Thursday. It's actually an hour at the market open. And you can attend if you want. You know, as we're looking for new trades, you get to ask questions, um, all that kind of stuff, get trades analyzed. Well, you don't have to because the uh, alerts and everything come out with you in the room or not um, to your phone or to your email. And we record that. If you can't make it, but you're interested, we record the whole session and then do a two-minute recap. Any new trades, any changes. So you can just go watch the recording. You get a weekly live chat session Wednesdays at 6 p.m., 9 p.m. Eastern. You get a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me when you sign up to get a link. Get on my calendar. Let's talk and you know get acquainted and answer any questions. Get you off to a great start. I, get, I have tools and training on risk management and option trading, you know, the method I use, how to interpret the information and apply it to your trading, and absolutely risk management, how to, how to calculate the right position size so that if a trade fails, and some trades fail, the loss is a tolerable loss. So I provide information on that training, uh, ongoing training and support. And there's more. If you sign up uh, tonight with the link, which I think has been posted, hopefully, I can post it here, I think, in the chat area as well. So if you sign up tonight, uh, I'm, you know, during this session, before we hang up, I think that's posted now. I hope I got it to the right uh, place. Yes. Oh, and Becky had posted it as well. All right. Uh, I will include my Ichimoku Cloud course. I've got a training module, which has my proprietary cloud settings. It's got a written study guide, training videos, a printable trade setup cheat sheet. So you get the 30 days of my stock and option pick trial, and you get the Ichimoku Cloud for 37 bucks. So this price on that course is $247 on the website. You get it today for free if you sign up for the 30-day stock and option pick um, trial. That's a pretty good deal. If he's asking when price is far below the cloud, do you take the trade at that time? You know, I don't trace. I don't chase trends. I like to get into a new trend early when the when you know the new thing is happening. And if we look back at the Schwab uh, trade, uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't have gone long 
here, even though the trend is going on, I don't, I don't like to chase trends, but uh, so when it turned and just when it broke the cloud is when I took my entry. And, you know, when it's too late, it's too late. And the good news is there's thousands of symbols out there. Let me give you a couple more. Uh, here's one that I like. Short. Voice management. WM. It hasn't broken the cloud yet. But if it does, the retracement zone is clear down here. There might be some profit potential. So we're watching that one pretty close. Um, a symbol we found this morning in the trading room is NOW. I've never heard of this. I guess it's a cloud uh, services company. Um, that one may be a short coming up pretty soon. And then Constellation Brands, STZ, is another uh, watch list that's looking pretty good. This one's about to break the, the cloud. Nice, low, lower high. Low, lower high. Looking for a new low. May have some meat on the bone on a Constellation Brands. So there's some... Some more, but yeah, I, I just don't chase them. Once the once the trend is very mature, I'll look for something new. All right, uh, be happy to field any questions that you have. Any other questions? I've already covered the um, material. And again, you know, thirty-seven bucks, you get the thirty days of the stock picks, you get access to the trading room, and you get the Ichimoku Cloud. You can download the study guide, watch the videos, uh, all that stuff. Uh, there's no for each local cloud, any legitimate trading platform has that indicator included already for free. All you have to do is install it on your charts, and then I give you my proprietary settings and setup for that. Uh, Mike's asking, what direction do I think SPX and Dow are heading right now? I think there's a pretty good chance that we got a bigger correction uh, on our hands. I showed that chart earlier, uh, the S&P 500. And the reason I think that is because we've something has happened that hasn't happened in a long time. We broke down to the 200-day moving average. Price has gotten under the each mobile cloud and then um, pivoted off the bottom of it. We could pull up, right? And by the way, it's projecting a, a downtrend here with the each mobile cloud. So um, uh, it could go up to the 200. It could even go up to the bottom of the cloud and reverse again and still be in a downtrend. So it's not like, hey, tomorrow. It's going down, you know, straight down. The price doesn't move in straight lines, but it looks like we've begun a bigger downtrend here on the S&P 500 and the, uh, uh, the other indexes as well. And this would be wave four. This would be wave four, and you're going to see it more clearly on a weekly chart. Wave three is this whole move up. Wave four is going to be a retracement into the Fibonacci zone. And this could take... Um, you know, quite a period of time. It's not like it's going to happen in a week. If you look at a monthly chart, right, the, the last correction, you know, 2007, right, took, you know, what, 18 months to play out. The dot-com thing took, I think, 30 months to play out. So, but it looks like it's a, it'd be game on that for the better move down. And there's a lot of money to be made. The market goes down faster than it goes up. It right, takes the stairs up, the elevator down, and we're going to be calling out trades like mad and trading that thing. Okay. I think we've got about five minutes left. I certainly want to honor the time here and your time. Sure appreciate you watching and uh, all the questions that you guys had and your, your engagement and your interest. It was a fun, fun group to present to. Um, Put that link in there one more time and just uh, let me know if you got any other questions at all. Happy to field them. Uh, support areas down in uh, S&P 500. Any major prior low is a potential support area. So we draw a line here. Right, we're through this one, so. It can pause here, it can pause here, here, right? Um, but this looks like it is continuing, and we're down through the indicator-based support areas of the HMO Cloud and the 200-day uh, moving average. You just got to kind of take it from point to point to point. That's my... Hey, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, learning's fun, isn't it?
Will this uh, webinar be available anywhere later? Um, it's being recorded, and I'm pretty sure that it will be on on the website, an email with a link going out, stuff like that. Uh, Vicky says each microcrod gives a late signal in some cases. Well, it depends on how you use it. Um, I use it as a confirmation, um, so there's nothing late about that. If it's confirming, you know, I don't I don't take a trade based on any one indicator or signal. And again, if we go back to this uh, Schwab trade, right? I took it because um, we had lower lows, lower highs, uh, clarifying a downtrend. I took it because it broke the 200-day moving average. And it was under the 200-day moving average, and we had a good wave count, right? And the momentum indicator showed it was heading down. So it's the complete picture, right? One indicator. There's no one indicator, one rule, one signal, right? It's a combination, kind of like a you know, a, a law case, right? We build it based on evidence. And so um, in this case, it wasn't late. It was just a confirmation of what I saw happening in price action. That's really how I use it. Hey, Steve, thank you very much. Uh, Steve said, thanks, great presentation. I uh, I had fun too. So I think my time is running out. I go ahead and uh, turn it back over to my very gracious host, Steve. Thanks for having me here.